casualties, deficiencies, Epsom salts. Update. Oh, that water felt nice and warm. Hey, it's good to have you here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Yep, as you just heard, casualties, deficiencies, update, uh, Epsom salts. That's what's happening here today. <laughs> update, most important of all, because you can see what is going on. Anyway, I had nice warm water. My buckets were in the sun, and summer bloomers don't like cold water around their feet, which is something I've been struggling with for the past, well... November, December, January, three months, and we are not done yet. So, good to have you here. Let's get the elephant out of the room. Phalaenopsis speciosa crossed with Violacea on the left. I still have her. She's not in the pot, though. I don't know how long I'll have her. And that is why I figured this would be a good time to do this update so that in future, things are not going to be that lengthy. We've got issues. Same issues happen with my KTC Kaokicha Kut on the right. Ahem. Yes, well, here's the thing. While I have taken off my Speciosa crossed with Violacea and trying to put her into an ICU setup that I can maybe rescue her, very, very doubtful because I don't have the temperatures, I don't have the light. So not holding my breath with that one, but we're going to give it a go. I have one route to work with. And until she doesn't collapse the way the KTC Kauki Chakut has collapsed, she is going to at least be given a chance. My KTC Kauki Chakut, well, that was a shocker as well. Why am I shocked? Anyway, let me just say it still surprises me. I hate it. Anyway, too slow of a grower for the conditions that she's up against. She tried, so have I. I do see a little green something on the edge there. That's why she's not removed from her pot. But now that I've filmed this, I'm able to remove the dead leaves. This is the only thing that I wanted to leave the leaves on to get to filming. Meanwhile, it's been too cold to have them outside. Today is not such a day. It's even warm enough for them in the shade. But she has had stem rot clearly this leaf popped off and it was all nice lush and green anyway here we are so with the elephants out of the room let me remove them right at the front is pinkton bronze age it is also somewhat of a slow grower a novelty hybrid that would like a lot more light than they've all gotten so i'm going to try and not repeat myself here but at least it's holding on it is losing a uh, leaf which is a shame i was hoping that it would hold on keep that leaf but the spike has progressed the new spike i'm very happy to see that to be honest I may actually lose the buds that are now coming out because I've moved the orchid to bring her out here, but the health of the orchids is super important because today I am giving them their first Epsom salt soak so that they can at least, <laughs> hopefully, start to recover from the deficiencies my summer fowls always get during the winter because I'm extremely conservative when it comes to fertilizing. They always get something, but they cannot get as much because the conditions are not conducive with fertilizing. So anyway, we may lose the buds. It would be a shame, but you know what? We don't want to lose the orchid. You see, my little collection here of summer bloomers is small. It has been decimated based on the last two winters. Hopefully, these will hold on, because on the left, I've got Yin's Black Eagle. I would hate to lose that orchid. Also, getting her soak. At least I got a nice new leaf late 2022. I really would love to have this one be more vigorous. I need some more foliage for me to feel like it's going to be okay. I need to repot this one later in the season because the pot she's in is broken, but you know, for the time being, it's fine. And then we can move on to my Tabasco Tex, which has grown a new side plant. Oh, that's giving me lots and lots of hope. I'm telling you, it did not stop growing through the harsher conditions. 
but of course there's a lot going on and it has to have magnesium hence i'm hoping to boost it a little bit it's showing signs of deficiency all over the new leaf on the mother plant also has deficiencies the old leaves are struggling as well but i have also got a spike on the new fan so this is giving me hope i do love my tabasco text the fragrance is delicious sugar spicy sugar if you like spicy desserts like i always think like a strawberry or a raspberry coolie with pepper or chili in it that's the notes that i get from that orchid absolutely for me delicious i love the fragrance so the fact that the new growth on the side has developed through these horrible months yeah i'm feeling i'm feeling it's gonna be okay meanwhile we're not through the woods yet but this is giving me hope because this would not be normal seeing as the other two we've just seen they didn't fare quite so well <laughs> understatement much <laughs> anyway children beyond the hedge are bouncing their basketball i hope that that doesn't disturb you too much i'm gonna move on with my last one here i do have the pulchra i don't want to bring her outside she's also holding on indecisive still what i'm gonna do with that one but anyway last one here is my leodora sweet memory she is showing signs of cold damage on her newest leaf which is somewhat to be expected you know new leaves tender structures cold temperatures yeah i'm just hoping that it is not going to mean that that leaf is going to struggle and with that the rest of the orchid as well meanwhile she did continue with her spike her brand new spike that she started to grow late in 2022 that progressed throughout the winter so I'm hoping that the stress of growing the spike, the energy consumption there is what's causing this orchid to struggle a little bit and not the fact that the cold temperatures are going to mean that in future winters we'll say goodbye to Leodora sweet memory as well. We shall see, time will tell. But, you know, maybe with a little push of Epsom salts, she's going to realize I'm still here, not ignoring her, and she will bless us with some blooms and her presence for many, many years to come. Now, another candidate I didn't bring out today, because if there is a breeze, she's not secured in her pot. That is my Phalaenopsis by Alessia variety Cerula. Oh, this one, yeah, I've got to be super careful with it. It started to show signs of stem rot two years ago, managed to keep that under control with some cinnamon. Thankfully, it never manifested itself and didn't progress. This time around, I started losing the next leaf and I was like, oh, not you too. <laughs> But thankfully, that one just dried off all by its lonesome. The leaf bract is still intact. It just dried off. So I'm hoping that this one will pull through. Gorgeous, gorgeous bloom with the most amazing fragrance of cinnamon sugar. It's divine. She was a first time bloomer for me in 2022 and she is one of the pricey ones. However, I got this one on sale. So she didn't come in that great condition. But you know, here we are couple of years later well maybe three or four and oh I just want to make sure that this one makes it my wonderful and most amazing and beautiful Phalaenopsis cornocerbi variety chatella day this orchid goes to the orchid ninjas all the time every time because of the smiley faces and the blooms and when I see orchid ninjas pop up in comments with all their little icons yeah, it always puts a smile on my face. So thank you, Orchid Ninjas. Here's an update on your Lady Chatterley, as I like to call her. Mealy Bug Central. I have to be super vigilant with this orchid, whether she is in bloom or right now just trying to tide her over through the winter because the mealy bugs like her a lot. And well, yeah, in this case, I'm also cleaning off some mealy bugs again with some garlic alcohol, as you do. But out of all of my summer bloomers, I have to say that she is the most vigorous, most robustest, happiest root grower. She just jumped into the Lekka and self-watering with never an issue, never stalled, and is just growing from strength to strength as the blooming of 2022 proves in the image that you saw previously. 
It was a beautiful show, bloom after bloom after bloom. As we know, sequential bloomers are with the Phalaenopsis something that we should be mindful of. And she just produces spikes and then bloom, 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 bloom. I'm hoping maybe for another new spike in 2023. You never know. Right now, mealybugs need to be kept in check. If I find one, two, uh, that's already one or two too many. So this one, yeah, she's always under my radar during these winter months, during the summer months. And of course, because of Orchid Ninjas, love this orchid. I don't think she's threatened by my conditions. Oh, that's awesome. Now, the reason I'm saying I don't have the right conditions, especially light, is because of where they live in the indoor growth space. They're on the bottom shelf. But I do have some sunny days and sometimes eventually for maybe an hour, 45 minutes, the sun will reach them in that corner. But now we've got the sun already rising in the sky, which means that they don't get any sun at all. So it is crunch time for my summer bloomers from now on all the way through to to probably mid-May when I can then move the other orchids outside and these guys get much much better light on the shelving where the other orchids currently are. So if you would cross your fingers with me that at least we have right at the end, I don't know, maybe we could have five. Uh, I'm like I said, not promising anything. Having said that, cross your fingers with me, please. If this video was helpful, if you would like to know more detail about my conditions, haven't seen videos before of how I'm dealing and coping with the winter months, let me know in the comments and I'll be very happy to elaborate or pinpoint you two videos that will explain everything in more detail. Meanwhile, another thing I would really appreciate is if you would hit the like button just because, you know, losing orchids, my self-esteem is once again at a little bit of a low point. And a like would help that tremendously make me feel a little bit better. <laughs> I appreciate that you are here, that you've watched the video. Thank you so very much. I wish you a fabulous day. On one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.